gardener. I'm standing here in front of my Mexican sunflower, Theodonia diversifolia. To me, it's the miracle plant, yet it's so controversial, and we're gonna dig into that. It's a sterile plant, so the sunflowers up top have seeds, but those seeds are sterile so they don't spread. And then people will say that on the bottom, the root system goes and travels and comes up. That's a myth. So how it became controversial, I'm not really sure, because they say it's evasive. However, everyone that I know, and even myself that has them, they clump like that on the bottom. See the clump? And you don't see any coming up, do you? They're a clumping plant, and they do not spread. Okay, so let me see if I can pull one of these down, and we'll take a look at it. So here you go, right here. This is my Mexican sunflower. Now, it's a specific variety, which is for, or to be used as chop and drop, or fertilizer, liquid compost tea. I use it for both, and almost everything on my permaculture property gets liquid tea made out of these. And as you can see, they have blossoms, they flowered, and the blossoms have seed. But those seeds, if you try to harvest them and grow them, they're not gonna grow. You actually see some seeds being sold online. I would not buy them. And the reviews are for the people that did buy them, they're not growing. And for the people that bought them and they grew, only to find out that it's a different type of sunflower. It's not this type. So be careful about that. So let's go ahead and check out some more. You can see this here. Here's a blossom right now getting ready to open up. So this is the time of the year where they're all setting off blossoms on the top. But if you look down here at the bottom, this is a weed. This is not that. But if you look at the bottom, it's one clump. And that's how they grow. They grow in clumps. They do not spread. Look at the bottoms. Look at the bottoms of all of my plants. See how they're clumped? Okay, so the purpose of that was to show you that there's a root ball, they're clumped, and they grow out of that clump. They do not spread. You can have these for years. The base might get a little bigger, but they're not going to go underground and come up somewhere else, and the seeds aren't going to make them come up all over. Regular sunflowers spreads all over. I've got some over by my garden and they trinkle down the seeds and they pop up all over the place. But hey, I like that because that's for my pollinators. But over here, let's go ahead and take a look. These blossoms right here, look how big they are. Look at that. They look awesome. And they smell just like a, um, a plant nursery or a, gift, a flower gift shop. Woman's perfume. Very nice. Let's go over here and pull down some more. Oh, I love the smell. Now, I don't go ahead and, and pick these and put them in the house, but 
for you ladies out there, if you pick these and put these on your kitchen table, your kitchen's going to smell like this. Wow. So as you can see up on top, let me go ahead and extend this up. You can see all these flowers right here. Okay, let's pull some more down. There you go. Look at these. Woo! Wow. You know, some of them smell stronger than others, but look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. Nice. They're just like really, really nice. Let's pull down some more. I'm going to stand on this pipe. Ooh, it's wobbly. Let me get down. I'm going to break my head. So here you go. Here's some more. Mexican sunflower. These are the sterilized, sterile. They do not drop seeds and pollinate. So they're not going to go ahead and be evasive and spread. And they're not going to spread at the roots. They're clumping. Sort of like clumping bamboo. So anyway. <laughs> these are all my nursery pots. So let me try to get around them over here. I got all different sizes all the way up to really large ones. But... Now, how tall do they get? Well, here's a shed that I have. And they're up at the top of the shed. So, that's probably 15 feet tall right there. So, that's why I love this variety. They, they get nice and tall. They have a lot of foliage. Now the foliage on them I made compost tea out of and I'll show you that in a second. But you got to love this time of the year when they give off all these nice blossoms and the pollinators come around and collect the pollen and go make honey and all that. Got to love it. So, but the real beauty of it is right here. You take these leaves you cut them back, you chop them, drop them, you drop them down, or you make compost tea. Let's go take a look at some of my compost tea I made out of it. Okay, here I am in front of my barrels. All of this, the barrel over there, all of these in the barrel over there are compost tea. So let's see. Okay, so I opened up the lid over here, and as you can see, there's some maggots in there. But if you stir it up, the maggots are okay. That's just, um, bu um, bugs that went ahead and grew in there. But you go ahead and you stir this up. Look how dark that is. And you put your cover back on. And here, here's another one right here. At first, you're going to have leaves on top like that. You see the top of it? But if you push it down and you stir it, look how dark that is. That's compost tea, very rich in nutrients for all your plants. Okay, so here's another one right here. This one really needs to be stirred up. You can see how thick it is. I'll break through it right here. And I'll go ahead and stir it up a little. I haven't 
I put this in here and I haven't stirred it yet. You can let it sit there as long as you want. Okay, so basically that's what that looks like. And all you do is you take your leaves and you set your leaves in the barrel. I got videos on all this down below, go check them out. You stuff your barrel up full, real tight. So it'll be 100% filled with leaves, filled up with water. Just take your top like this and put it on. You can take your band, put your band on that locks it in place. And that's it. In about six weeks, two months, and longer, you're going to have a lot of compost tea. When you go to utilize this, you dilute it. One gallon makes 10 gallons or eight gallons, however you want to dilute it. So being that's, th that's 35 gallons times 10, 35 gallons times 10, 40 gallons times 10, I always have a lot of fertilizer around to fertilize all my permaculture with. Not only are the plants happy, but so is my wallet. You save a lot of money. So I'm a believer in Mexican sunflower and Comfrey Bakken 14 for fertilizing all your plants. My banana plants look so healthy and they're 100% fed by my compost tea. And I fertilize them frequently because I don't have to worry about the cost.